Jay Hiff, Stretford Paddock. That's Stephen Alson. That was awful. Tell me about it. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin, mate. I mean, do you analyse the performance or do you say the performance is a symptom of the fact that we run like an absolute shit show? Well, yeah, both of those things are, you know, well, true. I mean, start with the performance, then we'll get to the sort of deeper things later on. The right. performance. First 30 seconds was fantastic. Saw some brilliant one-touch football, won a penalty, took the lead. It all went downhill from there. Why, though, right? We were talking before the game, and no one was going, panic stations about that lineup. No one's going, oh, my no God, what, like, what's all we done? So we, we all thought, I mean, literally three of us in the office, out of the four of us who did a predicted 11, picked that team. So you can't say it wasn't a strong team. You can't say it wasn't a team that fans wanted to see, and that doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. But at least it tells you that you know there was a some sort of a, an agreement that this was an all right eleven to play. Um, I was nervous about it. Um, I was buoyed a little bit by the fact that Spurs have played forty seven games in the last week. I thought that might help us, but I was still nervous about it because I saw their eleven. I was like, "That's a good eleven. Our eleven is not that good." Um, it is a good 11 this could be a bit of a dice one I was feeling draw certainly wasn't feeling a 6-1 defeat um, but it was a few things um, I can't imagine they're tactical um, but maybe they are there was I think I said to Joe at one point why are we narrow on the short side you know, Spurs was attacking down the left um, when you're defending in your own third going narrow is textbook you go narrow the opposite fullback is meant to control the width of, of the line. He's meant to push into like, you know, probably a level with the, the goalpost. Gives you a nice tight compact back four. But the fullback on that side is meant to go out and close the man down. And then the centre half, centre half, and then the opposite fullback. Sometimes the six might drop in if it's a bit hairy. Um but we was narrow on the short side. Wambataka was in the width of the box on the short side. Luke Shaw had tucked in on the other side, so our entire back four was within the corner of the box to around about the other side of the D. And uh, Spurs had two players attacking us down our left flank. And you're like, uh, I can't imagine that Ollie's put that on a board anywhere and gone, we're doing that. Because I, I don't know what has what, what that prevented. You're not stopping them going down the side. You're inviting someone to put a cross in for Harry Kane. Don't know if you've heard about him. He's all right. Scores some goals. That's not a good move. You want to be blocking and stopping and... And maybe even forcing them inside a little bit to where it's a little bit more congested and you might be able to win the ball back. It made no sense. And then there was a few times that you pointed it out, uh, Andy pointed it out, we're jogging out to the opposition wingers. Um, even when it was a loose ball, we're jogging out. And it was, and that was wan and Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw, way more, because wan goes and tackles it usually, even if it's a loose ball, just tackles it if he likes to keep that practicing. But Luke Shaw jogging out often and I go... I can't imagine a manager's ever said, hey, when it's a 50-50 ball, just toss it off. I can't imagine a manager said that. So for all the people that go, oh, he got his tactics wrong. Okay, which tactics? What specific tactics did he get wrong? If he did tell him to go narrow, yes, 100% that's on him. I can't imagine any manager ever said go narrow on the short side because that is the most bonkers thing I've ever seen. I can't imagine ever, any manager ever said casually walk out to the, an opposition winger in our third. No one ever talks like that. The, the word you'll hear is, be on his touch, don't let him turn. That sort, that sort of defending 101. Why is he not doing that sort of thing? And then, to be honest, they, they had a good game. Son, like we said at the start of the game, I, I rate Son a lot. I think he's the one who makes Tottenham tick. Uh, they created a lot through him. Uh, and he also had a, a fantastic game. But the individual errors in our defence was... I mean, can you pin... The Brighton game on that. Can you pin, pin the Crystal Palace game on that? It's not good enough. Paddy Ever has just said on Sky, we need to drop Maguire, but will they? No, is the answer. They will not. Will, they will not. When you spend £80 million on a centre-half, politics does get involved, sadly, into football, and they will keep starting him. Sadly. Because maybe the message that we need to send is that his performance hasn't been good enough. The one, the one issue you've got with Maguire... In this Manchester United team. I think he's been effective since he's been signed. Not this season. He's been shite. But he's been effective. We've seen an increase in clean sheets. We've seen a reduction in the amount of goals conceded. He's been effective. This season he's been terrible. 
But when you bring in someone like Aaron Maguire, the politics does come in because they're not going to drop him. And even if you drop him, you literally need two centre-halves. Eric Bailly, I love a little bit of crazy. I love a little bit of character. I love that sort of temperament. I love that sort of player that comes in. He's never been able to be relied upon for more than 20, 25 games a season, and that's not good enough. Harry Maguire played every game last season. That's the sort of dependability you need as a centre-half. You have two of them, two of them high-level, world-class ones. Harry Maguire's not world-class. Harry Maguire's a very good defender. He's not world-class. This club should be looking at Rio Ferdinand, Nemanja Vidic, and going, who are they in this game, and how do we get them in our shirt, and whatever do they cost? Because that's what we did with them, guys. And that should be the standard. We know what elite defenders look like why can't we go and recruit elite defenders we know that Harry Maguire Lindelof and even Eric Bailly who I think is above Lindelof he's not world class I get where you're coming from right? and I agree with you but mate you don't have to be an elite defender to stand on a ball to, yeah not edit straight up to stand on a ball to run with your man on a quick free kick I mean these are basic why come on why are we even running with men on quick free kicks why is no one standing on a ball basics yeah. this shit I mean, that's what I mean. It's just so you were screaming, you were screaming at it like before it happened. Like it's obvious. So even to, to layman's for a better one, for one of a better word. But, so surely a, a, a even a okay Manchester United defender or Premier League defender should know this these things. Mate, how many times have you been like? Well, I don't care how old you were playing football. Tens, elevens, twelves, thirteens, fourteens. You always don't. You never let him take a quick free kick. No. You just go stand there and I have a side even yeah. Move yeah uh, Do you know what Most of the time it's So my lads can have a breather Because like At five a side Everyone's breathing out their ass. But like Manchester United Harry Maguire gets caught Nowhere near the free kick To stop it And nowhere near his bat line He needs to have been A leader in that situation And take command of that I've seen people do it That are not paid Anywhere near as much As Harry Maguire is And go Get on that free kick And I'll get back you see none of that urgency, none of that intelligence, none of that nous. Yeah. You don't see that. You don't see you know, the, those dark arts, something I'd love a Sergio Ramos for. Sergio Ramos, do you think Sergio Ramos lets you take a quick free kick? Get no. the fuck out of here. That doesn't happen. None of those things happen. He's all about you know, the little snide tactics here, there and everywhere. Is it great? No. But it fucking is when it's your team. You hate him if he plays for the opposition. You love that sort of shit when it's for you. But it's real leadership and real character. And that's what United's problem is. We don't have enough of those. We don't have enough people. Like, you remember, I think it was Ryan Giggs and Wayne Rooney with the corner kick that they'd taken and, and cracked on with. I think it might have been Paddy Avro and Ryan Giggs with uh, Throw Up My Back. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Who knows about those things? Who knows about those little rules in this team to be able to pull them tricks out? No one. Those are little tricks, advanced moves, if you like, but these are all professional footballers. This is your craft. You're supposed to know all of those little things. All those little things. From the little things like, I'll tell you now, the team that takes the first penalty in a penalty shootout wins 60% of those penalty shootouts. So if you ever get the opportunity to toss for a penalty shootout, you always take the first penalty. That's it. It doesn't even matter if you score the first penalty. If you take the first penalty, you've got a 6% chance of winning that penalty shootout. Moscow. All, of, all of these sorts of things, they should be in the back of a footballer's head. Quick free kicks. Knocking it, just kick the ball away. Sometimes it's worth a yellow. Tactical fouls. It's intelligent football. And at the moment, Manchester United don't play intelligent football. We play football. We play football like it's a fucking hobby, not a job. And these are some of the highest paid fucking hobbyists the world has ever seen. And it's just plain and simple, abjectly not good enough from these players and you can put some of it down to your know, match sharpness and pre-season yes but some of that fuck no i don't care how tired you are and what was it like 10 15 minutes into the game no i don't care how jaded and faded you are there's basics of football that they're not doing their first goal highlights that the, the runaway free kick highlights another one of those and all of this symptomatically because our owners don't give a fuck maybe I agree, our owners don't give a fuck. Um, just a couple of points before we wrap up. You've mentioned there, no leaders. How do you address that? What do you do? You go out and buy a leader? Does someone need to step up? What What's the answer to that one? Well, I thought it was a weird appointment to give Harry Maguire the armband after being here, like, five minutes when he got the armband. But literally, who else could you give it to? Pogba? That's its own soap opera. Right. De Gea? No. So... Ego Harry, see if that fits. That's a massive fundamental issue at the club. 
No, I, you you go back and pick any other era of Manchester United. Pick 93, 94, because I like that one. So, too many captains? Yeah, probably about seven. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you're <laughs> arguing over the armband, probably. Yeah. Or right. if Robert weren't there. Um, 99. Again? Do you know what I mean? You've got leaders and, and potential captains all over it. It's not an age thing. You know, Ryan Giggs was early 20s in 1999. So was David Beckham. Both of them could easily carry the armband. You know, obviously, you had um, Yapstam, Roy Keane, Peter Schmeichel. What, what a player. Don't get me started on that. Still pains me that he captain does in 99. Um, just finally, we know your thoughts on the owners. They're horrible, the parasites, they need to go. But how often that gonna, when's that going to happen? I don't know. Where does this leave Ollie? I know you've backed him, but there are going to be people going, he's to blame, 6 1 at home. Da, 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 da. Does he just keep going and just, you know, well, the, Romeo, hope that the, right, he, so he gets it right after the international break? Things start coming good with hopefully some signings. I just want to think where you think it leaves him, not necessarily where you are on with him but where you think this leaves him oh fuck knows I can't preempt what our owners are going to do because they don't do what good owners do do so I don't know what they're about to do um, but if, you, if you're if you going to be someone that puts this on to the manager I'll say okay you've got to get yourself some criteria and which you can judge the guy against have his signings been good largely yes have his tactics been good in the big games largely yes Against the smaller teams, you're expecting um, the individual talent to come out and actually do something. But the big games is where your tactics really come into play. He's been largely good in those. We've got we've done pretty well in the cup competitions. We've always gone far in cup competitions. Not really see an early exit from United in cup competitions. The eleven today, most of us picked the same eleven. Therefore, you have to say the team selection was probably correct. Probably. You don't know. You can never have a time machine and roll it well fifteen different ways and, and see. Were his tactics to be narrow on the short side? I can't imagine he did. So, if the players aren't adhering to your tactics, is that on the manager? Maybe. Do you worry? Do you worry that there's an element of the players aren't playing for him, or is that just being melodramatic? I don't think that's a thing. Honestly, I really can't think that that's a thing. I, I don't understand that. I understand my, my lost the dressing room. Fucking players might hate him. But the players hated Jose Mourinho and still fucking turned up and, and put in some good performances under him. You wouldn't think as well, from the impressions you get, that these players don't like Ollie. He seems to be quite a popular guy, doesn't he, with these players? Like, Zero rumblings yeah. about anyone not... You'd hear something, wouldn't you? Oh, undoubtedly, yeah. He'd be all over the place, fucking hell. So I can't imagine that that's the case. I can't imagine that the players aren't happy with that. Um, I know that there's extra training going on with Kieran McKenna working on technical aspects of it. There's countless players have been improved by Solskjaer in his tenure at Manchester United. So what criteria are you putting against him? Results? That's fair enough. You know, it is a results business at the end of the day, but who do who do you bring in that obviously gets better results? And that's where I think a lot of the argument breaks down. And you can say Poch if you want, but I don't think he obviously brings in... Jose Mourinho was the obvious guy to bring in better results, and he didn't bring in obvious better results. You need to back the guy that's in the, in the seat. You need to give him the signings he needs... And it's not necessarily about the money either. It's about finding sometimes the right player. The right player might be a free transfer. The right player might be a £2 million transfer. The right player, you know, for, for Fergie in 2006, the right player might have been some 18-year-old fucking cra £18 million crab from Tottenham. Michael Carrick was not on any Ballon d'Or list. But you bring him in, put him into Manchester United, and, and suddenly you start seeing in colour. Everything started happening with Manchester United once you, you bring in that piece. No one was ever going, Michael Carrick's the fucking player that's going to make us European champions. But he did. Yeah. And that's what has to happen sometimes. We can't always see the wood for the trees. A manager might be going, I'm trying to fucking play this. To, I haven't, do you know if I had, uh, and it probably isn't, but a Cavani or a Sancho. Or, you know, and a, Joe, if I had a fullback that overlapped, and got into the box. I've got one that sits. I've had another that overlapped. X, Y, Z. If we had that. But who is that? And is Oli going to get that? Is Oli going to get that? No real leaders. Not a great day. That's been Stephen Allison. I've been Jay Motty. Don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. This has been Stretford Paddock. Thanks for watching.